Before we get started, we just want to thank our sponsors, Cardo and Earpiece, for helping to make this video possible. The middleweight adventure segment continues to be white hot as new models join the stacked field to prove their brand's metal in the class. One of the latest to join the party is the Aprilia Touareg, a 659cc parallel twin powered ADV machine, KYB suspension, and a stout electronics package. Curb weight comes in at a spelt 460 pounds, according to the Motorcycle.com scales. With similar specs and size, it's easy to match the Italian newcomer to Yamaha's crowd favorite, the Tenere 700. The Tenere uses a parallel twin engine with a slightly larger 689cc displacement, as well as KYB suspension, and tipped our scales at 454 pounds. With less than a $2,000 price difference, these two machines take a different approach to adventure riding, but we wanted to see just how different or similar that might be. So we headed to Sturgis, South Dakota to kick off a 2,000 mile journey back to LA that would include full days of off-road riding, as well as lots of pavement strafing on two fully loaded bikes. What's up guys? Ryan and Evans from Motorcycle.com coming to you live from the Get On ADV Fest here in the Buffalo Chip just outside Sturgis, South Dakota. Heard there was going to be some tour eggs up here. Yep. So uh, we decided to send a Tenere and uh, see how they compare on the way back. Maybe eight, over 1800 miles on road, off road on the way home. We're going to ride them the way they're meant to be ridden. And we want to showcase that you don't need a 1200cc motorcycle to do a trip like this because these motorcycles, I guarantee that they're gonna be a blast. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna have a good time. And they're gonna be fully loaded. Yeah, we're gonna load them down. We're gonna do uh, parts of the Wyoming BDR, parts of the Utah BDR, and kind of over six days do a lot of cool twisty roads and also a lot of slab. You know, that's the way it goes on an adventure ride. Our first bit of testing comes via the serpentine roads at the Black Hills National Forest in Custer State Park. Thankfully, we managed to dodge most of the traffic by foregoing a close view of the dead presence of Mount Rushmore and continued south. It's pretty empty this morning. Yeah, I guess that means it's about time to get out of here. Get this that's show good. on the road. Thank you. Now imagine this place filled with thousands and thousands and thousands of motorcycles. It's insane. Yeah, I've been here a couple times and it's just absolutely jam-packed. Adventure machines just keep getting better and despite the fact that many believe a 21, 18-inch wheel combo is only good for dirt riding, time and time again this latest class of adventure machines proves otherwise. Tight roads. It is going tight. And wow. Going. <laughs> Scrape my mirror on this uh, guardrail a little bit, maybe. <laughs> I came pretty close. <laughs> Holy Toledo. <laughs> yeah, you can feel on these tighter corners, you can feel the bike kind of fall into the corner a little bit because yep. of the big yep. front wheel, but. <laughs> Adding a little throttle helps. Yeah. But still. And my dash is still reading that it's 102 degrees at this altitude. These tires work pretty well on the street. Yeah. I've been pretty happy. These are both Pirelli, the Pirelli Scorpion STRs. They're really good. This whole Black Hills and Custer State Park area is really pretty. I did notice that we got to our first one of these really tight turns when we were hauling down from speed that, yeah, front end braking is not the strongest on either of these bikes. Yeah, 
And you're on the pack mule. How's it handling that extra weight in the rear? Uh, the Tenry is handling it pretty good. I haven't really noticed it. Side to side transitions have been just fine. Yeah. So Ryan, I think the Yamaha is probably doing pretty well in this stuff with the bottom end. Yeah, you can just really lug it, lug it down into these corners and roll it back on. You've got all that low end torque. And I'm guessing there really is probably kind of the opposite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm having to work the gearbox a little. Yeah. Triple degree temps and infamous Wyoming wind made some of our long straight sections of highway slightly less enjoyable than it could have been. But despite the heat and wind, we were eager to get to our campsite at the start of what would be section five of the Wyoming backcountry discovery route in reverse. After watching all the other kids play at the ADV Fest, I was eager to put some time on these two machines off-road. Oh, it's so nice to be somewhere cooler. <laughs> Man, that was one hot day. Yeah, all the way up, what, 111? Yeah, that was, that yeah. was the highest I we, remember. We had to ride in it for like at least an hour, hour and a half. That was a little brutal. And then I thought the wind was only like 30 miles an hour, but then we get to that section of what was it, I-80, mm -hmm. where it said 40 plus. Yeah. yeah. So imagine how much later we would have gotten here if we had run out of gas here. <laughs> the Tenere tank is a little bit smaller. It's just, it's only getting like a mile per gallon less. They're both right around 40, but... Also, I think it's a, a little bit pessimistic when it comes to um, flashing the gas thing, because that time we got 35 or 38 oh, miles yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, um, after. Or after it flashed the fuel. Right. But we did slow down quite a bit. <laughs> we wanted to you know, play it safe. I didn't want to have to bust out the tow truck on the first day. No, no. <laughs> There's bears in these here woods. Bad? The night is still young. And we have to get up at 5 when it gets light. Here we are, day two, and day two of the Wyoming BDR yeah. in reverse. In reverse. In contrast to the previous day's need to put down some mileage, today we'd be treated to 75 miles or so of excellent views and well-groomed fire roads on our way south through the Medicine Bow National Forest on our way to Centennial, Wyoming. Great. So smooth, delivers nice low end torque off road. It's great twisty stuff on road too. Good, good motor. You can feel the difference in the bottom end torque with the Torag. You know, I was riding briefly in the dirt yesterday on the Tenere and it just it likes lugging down low. Torag, you know, feels like it's you know not as happy doing it, but got me through there. We'll see how when it gets more rocky and more technical what happens. Yeah, so a couple changes that they made with the uh, Touareg's 660 parallel twin versus the RS660 and the Tuono. Uh, they actually rotated the engine back and the chassis a little bit and changed the, uh, the intake, the exhaust, uh, different cam profiles, all in, you know, the mission of making this a little bit more of a torquey machine, a little more punch in the, in the low to mid range. And I think they succeeded. The The other bikes kind of had a noticeable flat spot in the mid-range, and I don't really get that with this bike. There is a little bit of a weird little blip in the throttle response right near 5,000 RPM, which you can feel if the cruise control is right there, or you can feel it when you're kind of going around town, you're in the just kind of the middle of the RPM range. But other than that, it feels pretty smooth, and it, it you know, you don't have a lot of power down low, like we had mentioned, uh, but it comes on really smooth, and then once you get up you know, into the higher end of the RPM range, six, seven thousand, then it really picks up and you kind of, you can really feel the correlation between the RS and the uh, Tuono there. One of the things I also notice is that uh, the clutch is easier on this, so I think it'll really help me uh, uh, when we get to the more technical stuff, and I'll be working on the clutch. Yeah, so they're both cable clutches. Which is, I mean, the nice thing about the adventure bikes, though, is, I mean, unless it gets really technical, 
Well, <laughs> definitely with the Tenere, you can lug it down yeah. a little bit. I'm sure the, the Touareg will need a little more clutch work. We but... will see. Yeah. Yeah, definitely good to get those. Going through that little bit of a water crossing back there was enough to remind me how slick the uh, rubber rubber inserts can get on well, the foot pegs. Glad so. it was relatively flat that you discovered that slickness as opposed to something else. <laughs> me too. It's nice that they pull out both of them for the Touareg and the Tenere. You can just plop in or pull out with yep. no tools though. The stuff that the guys have put together with the BDR routes is, is amazing that they, you know, they give it to people. All that information, GPS tracks, lodging stuff, hotels, food, all that, like for free, it's incredible. Like, so, <laughs> pl plug for the BDR. We're, uh, we're not involved with them, we're not sponsored by them. I just think it's a, I just think it's a super cool thing that they do. Well, now that these guys are kind of out of radio range, I guess I could make a little confession. I am the least experienced off road rider on the most staff. And turning me loose on these bikes is uh, kind of interesting. So we're gonna get to see two different points of view on this ride. Ryan is a really experienced adventure touring and off-road rider, but I think that, uh, that a lot of guys that are looking to go adventure touring that uh, might have the same level of primarily like 90% of their riding is street riding and they're interested and they're curious about getting out in the dirt. So uh, here I am and Hopefully I can represent for y'all. An extracurricular trip to the top of Kennedy Peak's 10,800 foot summit ought to give us some relief from the heat as well. Once up top, we are rewarded with spectacular views and a healthy dose of wind. Yeah, nice view. Despite these two bikes serving up their adventure platters in different ways, both were proving to be more than capable for our trip. But don't make it down here. Tell my family I love them. I will. It was nice to see the mercury drop on our way up to Kennedy Peak. This gave us our first test over cobbly softball sized rocks and hairpin corners as we ascended the mountain. Two up, man. Leaving the rustic Old Corral Hotel, another 400 mile day awaited us. Before heading back into the stifling summertime heat in the low grasslands of Wyoming, we relished in the cool temps and stunning views of the snowy mountain range off State Highway 130. Our third day of the trip is another chance to gobble up miles while towing the state line between Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado before getting to the starting point of the next section of our BDR run in Evanston, Wyoming. Man, when I think about what we went through the other day compared to this, 75 degrees, rolling hills. This is what I came for. So when you get these big 21 inch front wheels, you think they're not gonna corner as well. And while the direction changes aren't as snappy, you know, I've really been able to just bend this Tenere into the corners and that series of 30 mile per hour corners that we were just ripping through. Just lean over, stand it up, lean it back over. It's not flopping into its side, it's just, it's a dance. It's it's. You know, it's more graceful. It's, it's not hip hop, it's ballet. <laughs> as long as you ride smoothly and not, you know, ab abruptly, you know, slamming on the brake, accelerating hard, and just let it, you know, stroke slowly through it, the suspension travel, it, it's really fun. Hopefully, the Aprilia's front brake is nowhere near as uh, strong or as the uh, Tenere, so you can't really. You know, you're gonna have to slam on the brakes hard. It's... So how's the windshield on that Tenere treating you? It's doing okay. The, you know, there was a little section where we up in the high pass above 10,000 feet with the snow on the mountains nearby that I was uh, wishing for a little more wind protection. But other than that, it seems to strike a good compromise between giving me a little bit of cooling and taking the pressure off yeah. my body. And I'm not getting any buffeting at any of the ridiculous speeds we've gone, so that's really nice. Yeah, I feel like the Touareg definitely has a little bit more wind protection, you know, uh, the bigger windshield, but also even yep. the way the the kind of front of the gas tank and air box is shaped. 
which that makes sense. You know, may, that may kind of contribute to the bubble of hot air around in my lower legs too. But uh, but yeah, no buffeting. It's all clean air for me at five eight. No no problems. And what about the seats? There's a definite difference between these two in that department. Yeah, Should we you know. <laughs> for, Should we go with the good news or the bad news? <laughs> uh, I'll let you tell them the bad news. Bad news is, while the Tenere seat is a good perch for handling the off-road stuff, after about 70 or 80 miles, it starts to hurt a wee bit, and I find myself squirming around on it a bit more. Yeah, I think uh, with the cruise control, maybe a little bit more wind protection, and the much more comfortable seat, the, the Touareg is a, a more comfortable place to, to pound out some miles. You know, I was thinking yesterday we took the rubber pieces out of the pegs, and I was wondering what today would be like, if it would make any real noticeable difference as we were riding you know, between dirt days on all pavement. And I really haven't noticed that much more vibration in the Tenere. What's it like with the Touareg? Yeah, no, it's pretty smooth at, at 75 on the Touareg. It's not, you know, not a bother at all. I can feel it a little bit, you know, but it's not yep. not something that's going to make my, you know, toes go numb or anything. Yeah. Day four had proved to be a test of the off-road chops of the Tenere and the Touareg, spanning everything from rocky, rutted, slow-speed sections, hard pack, high-speed fire roads covered in pea gravel and water crossings. Not to mention a bit of exploring on unmarked side trails to find the perfect camp spot. A great test for our steeds and perhaps one of our riders as well. There you go. But as they say, anything worth doing isn't easy. So you kicked that rock up into my way on purpose. I have no control. <laughs> I'm just trying to survive. <laughs> oh, shit. Woo. What's up? I'm tired after that. <laughs> Abject terror will do that to a man. I tell you, these rocks are hard work. Wearing my ass out. What rocks? Yeah, yeah, maybe to you. <laughs> They're boulders, man. Giant boulders the size <laughs> yeah. of dogs. Yeah. <laughs> man, you make that look so easy. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to make it. But you did. Barely. I'm in barely in control. Now I'm having fun. Don't let my bitchin' tell you otherwise. <laughs> Look at the scenery. Oh, there's scenery around here? Oh, I see <laughs> dirt and rocks. <sighs> well, my boots are now full of water. <laughs> You made it! <laughs> yeah. As gracefully as always, I didn't fall over. <laughs> That's all that matters. So you want to go straight or left? Well, which way is the regular route? Left. Well, what's what's the one ahead? That's the expert route. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a try. <laughs> I, I'll... <laughs> Damn you. Let's give it a go. Let's check it out. You may end up riding on portions of this. Just be prepared <laughs> for that. Well, this isn't so bad. Right? You're an expert. Look at that. Yeah, we'll see what this little creek looks like. And then we can just blame me for not doing the expert route because I don't like having wet boots. No, I've already got wet boots, but... <laughs> I, 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 yeah. It's, uh, hold on. It's just, if I go on the other side of this, I'm not, I can't walk back across and help. <laughs> I'm just sort of at my limits here. Okay, I'm stuck. I'm gonna try to shoot across, but I'm just gonna be paddle walking. Oh, that was a nice experiment. I'm gonna pull forward a little. I can't tell if my feet are swimming in my boots from fear sweat or crick water. And there you go. We got this. <laughs> Fuck you guys, I'm going home. <laughs> See ya. I'm glad we tried. I'm sorry that we reached my limits so soon.
Hope you're excited, as excited about this spot as Sean and I when we first saw it. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see it. I just yeah. want to survive the, the <laughs> ride there. Hopefully it's worth it. There you go. Well, I'm down. So this one we're gonna roll down and then right through the middle between these big rocks. Ugh. We're almost, almost to it anyway. This will be an exciting start to the morning on our way out too. Or a soul crushing blow. <laughs> it is pretty. Yeah. And this is it. Well, that's pretty fucking beautiful. What do you think, right? Yeah. I wish I had the energy to care. <laughs> I think it was worth it. I'm sure I will. Okay, yeah, this is what we wanted. Yeah. I think we've had time to form some opinions about you know kind of how we feel about them uh, overall really but you know what what are you thinking off-road wise for what you've ridden with the Tenere and the Touareg? Uh, well, well first I want to say that sitting here with the lake behind me this is like the pinnacle of the trip <laughs> everything else from this is going to be downhill even though it's going to be fun I mean this is <laughs> this is what I wanted to come for. Coming around that corner was pretty spectacular. Yeah, seeing that, this. that was pretty amazing. Yeah. I came in with some preconceptions about the Tenere uh, because I'd spent a bunch of time on it and I felt like I knew it really well. But this is different terrain from what we rode it in last time, a lot rockier, a lot slower, um, and I'm a different rider uh, because I've been riding off road more. I found that, like I thought, the, the being able to chug over things is, is really nice. But um, I've noticed in today that I felt like I wish the bars were a little wider. The suspension, which felt kind of stiff on the road, uh, felt, felt the same way when we went over um, washboard type stuff. It, it felt like it just didn't have that slight compliance. I, I felt a little beat up. On the bigger stuff, it does a good job of soaking stuff up. In comparison to the um, Touareg, I like the, the, the Tenere's brakes. So that, you know, that's what sort of a summary of how I feel about the Tenere is it, it chugs over everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of came into it knowing that like that motor is fantastic. It's great yeah. in the street bikes. It's great in this, in this adventure bike. We all knew it was going to be. And, you know, I felt the same way coming into it. I'm like, all right, I know what the Tenere does good. Uh, I have some opinions about that again, because I've ridden it quite a bit too. And I was really curious about how the Touareg was going to com compare because they're a perfect comparison everyone at adv fest kept telling us that yes <laughs> um, which made me really happy <laughs> obviously they're super comparable bikes the touareg is a few thousand dollars more than the tenere is but with that money you get a lot of you know a lot more technology with the ride modes all the adjustability that you have with the engine for me the touareg kind of fits better overall uh whether that's sitting or standing and it's stock configuration, obviously that's something you can switch up on the Tenere, so it's not, you know, a huge thing. You can get that customized to your own preference. But it's it's inter interesting how the motors compare because, you know, they're the exact opposite. Um, the Tenere makes its power down low and really chugs down, and it's really nice in tight technical stuff, like coming down to the campsite. And then the Touareg makes way, like you get to 7,000 RPM, you know, almost most of the way up to the 10,000 RPM red line, and it's, it, you just get to 7,000 and it starts making a ton of power, um, you know, which kind of makes sense coming from the RS660 and the Tawano 660. But that being said, it's not totally gutless down low. If you're yeah. trying to kick out the rear or something, you know, it won't do it because you do need to spin it up to get that kind of that, the meat of that power, but you can still chug it down low and then it's really smooth and I, I actually felt like even though the Tenere has that power down low, 
the Touareg felt smoother over these rocky sections in terms of the throttle response. It doesn't have the power of the Tenere down low, but if, if you're crawling over something, it has plenty to do that. I did find that I needed to slip the clutch more. I was surprised that I could lug it down as low as I could and pull it. You know, I, I couldn't gas it like to accelerate away quickly, but I could pull away, I could motor away yeah. you know, from a low speed section. And I think it kind of broadens the spectrum of riders that could really enjoy the Touareg too, because it's it's almost a little more forgiving than the Tenere is down down low, you know? So it doesn't get you, because with the Tenere, you, you don't have a slipper clutch, um, you've got a really punchy low end, and those things mean you have to be smoother with the controls. On the Touareg, you have a really nice slipper clutch, and you have that really smooth low end power, and I feel like that just kind of makes it a little easier to ride. I, I think the suspension is pretty on par with each other. I, um, we haven't, you know, it is adjustable and you have remote preload in the rear and that's all that I've adjusted on, on the bikes because we were, we're carrying some luggage. So I've cranked up some preload into the rear and I think that's helped it. But I think they're pretty comparable in the, in the way they perform. I would say they're both kind of sporty feeling you know, they're, they don't, they definitely don't blow through their stroke. I, I feel like the Africa Twin is a bike that kind of moves through its stroke, um, you know, nicely, but these feel like a little bit more sport oriented, performance oriented uh, suspension at both ends. If I'm here as a representative of the people who are just getting into adventure riding, both of the suspensions in these bikes are absolutely fine. Yeah. You can tweak it a little to your uh, personal preferences. Mm -hmm. But it's not something I'd say, oh, the first thing I'd do is put stiffer springs in or right. something like that. Yeah, 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 I agree. I think it's a good baseline setting. And then, you know, if we had more time on it and... We weren't constantly switching bikes. Yeah, and faster terrain and then slower terrain. And, and, you know, I would probably find some things that I might want to tweak and adjust. But thankfully, you know, you can do that with the, with the stock stuff. So that's great. So I think it's about time to jump in that lake. Yep. All righty. Stay tuned. Another 400 or so miles awaited us on day five. Of course, we still needed to wrap up about 40 miles of fire roads from day four first. I didn't think you were gonna make the campfire last night there, Ryan. You were sacked out for a little while. <laughs> yep. But I lit it hoping that the smell of smoke would uh, make you come out and join us. Yeah, it kind of made me loft over there like uh, Pepe Le Pew, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great, it was good fun. Was that trail worth the campsite? It was definitely worth it. That's a testament to how beautiful the campsite was, <laughs> given how right. difficult it was for me to get there. Yeah. We got lots of miles to make today. Well, you said we had like 35 miles of BDR and then we've got 400 miles of street, so no side trips today, unfortunately. I've stopped. Okay. Yeah, I got my heart pumping. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't know if I can get enough speed to get over that little step there without falling over. Yeah, I think you'll be all right. Um, okay, well, I'll send it. Yeah, that's always when in doubt, just, you know, throttle out. I gotta say that campsite ranks up there with uh, the best that I've ever camped in. That was amazing. It's nice that both uh, the bikes come with skid plates too, even if they're kind of thin and whatnot. Yeah, you have a little bit nothing. straight from the factory. Yeah, definitely safe. You're planning on getting wild with these. You'd want to 
beef that up a bit, though. I thought we were getting wild. Yeah, sorry. Once we got to the starting point of day five, the lush green alpine foliage gave way to red rock as we made our way south. Out of the mountain and into the frying pan. At least that's how it felt as the temperatures began to rise. The vast scenic beauty of Utah's terrain makes you forget about the weather, and the Beehive State delivered on that all the way until the last rays of light had fallen behind the western mountain ranges. A bit groggy from our 3.30 a.m. wake-up call, the wake-up call from the real world also hit as our trip came to an end. We pressed out of Cedar City early to avoid July temps that had soared across the U.S. and would no doubt be scorching as we bisected Death Valley and the Mojave. All trips have to end sometime, and more often than not, 400 miles on the interstate is bound to happen during any of the longer ones. Once in view of the skyline of the City of Angels, pros and cons would be assessed, and, God willing, a winner would be chosen. I know, you want to find out which bike won the showdown, but first, we want to thank, again, our sponsors, Cardo and Earpiece. The entire Mo staff uses them on every ride, and we're huge fans. Additionally, if you like any of the gear we're wearing, from helmets to jackets to boots to luggage, it's all going to be listed in the video description. We get a small percentage of any purchase you make, but that's at no cost to you. All right, that's a wrap on the big trip. Sturgis to LA, we did it. The bikes were great. We had fun off-road, on-road. Got to do some camping and everything. Uh, I guess now's the time where we got to kind of decide what we feel about these two machines. Which one would you want to take home? What's the kind of summary? What do you think, Evans? Well, at this point, I think the one I should take home is the one that has my bag with the stinky socks in it. <laughs> I wouldn't subject anyone to that. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I think that, yeah, it's time for us to put our money where our mouths are and uh, <laughs> finally fess up and s say what it is. Now these bikes, w what's great about them is they can do it all from miles and miles of highway stuff at 111 degrees with 40 mile per hour winds. <laughs> they, can, they can go on canyon roads and with these Pirelli tires they can uh, do some pretty uh, impressive cornering. And then you can do like we did and hit the BDR and go through dirt, water, what seemed like miles of baby head rocks. I'm sure it was only like a football field or two, but I would be happy going with either of these. But you know, since it's my job to make a decision, I'm gonna have to say that it's the one I'm standing next to, which really surprises me because with all the experience I had with the Tenere prior to this ride, it went in as a heavy favorite on my part. And what won me over was stuff like the electronics. My biggest concern for this bike was that it wouldn't be able to lug over low-end type technical stuff, and it surprised me being able to do that. Um, ironically, the only bike I crashed on this, this trip, though, was the Touareg. <laughs> Where the Tenere didn't measure up, as far as I was concerned, in the polish. Yes, it's a less expensive bike, but I felt like what I got with the Touareg uh, more than made up for the additional cost. Yeah, I think the, the Aprilia is, is a more refined package overall. And n not to mention, of course, you get you know the additional technology and electronics with it. I think overall it's just a little bit more of a refined package. You know, uh, I was kind of surprised too because we've I've spent a lot of time on the Tenere. I really love this motor. I knew I was going to love it before the bike came out being able to ha uh, sample the motor in the MT-07, the XSR 700 when it came out. It, it, I guess it wasn't that much of a surprise that I really liked the motorcycle, but definitely in the shining, you know, star of the Tenere is the motor, I think, um, in my opinion. It handles great on the road. It's, even though it doesn't have cruise control, which I wish it did, but uh, it doesn't have cruise control, but it's still totally comfortable riding for thousands of miles as we, you know, as we did on this trip. And I do like it a lot off-road, especially in the tighter technical stuff because of that punchy motor. Yeah. With the Aprilia, the, my main negative and my main gripe about that bike, there's a heat bubble that collects basically from your knees to your down to your feet, and it just kind of stays there. When you're in really hot temperatures, really humid temperatures, it gets annoying. But other than that, I'm a big fan of the Touareg. It, Aprilia put together a stellar package. These two bikes compare really great together. They're, they're really great options. The Touareg's about $2,300 more, I think, but I think in the, the level of refinement, touring comfort that you get, for me, ergonomically, it's perfect. And then the additional technology, it's worth $2,300 more. Either one, you, you really couldn't go wrong, but my pick uh, would also be the Aprilia Touareg. Shocking. <laughs> so... I can't believe we agree. <laughs> So that's it. According to my trip meter, it's 1,956 miles from the Buffalo Chip to my driveway. And that, 
that was a lot of fun. You know, oh, yeah. There were a couple points where I was swearing, but it, it was a, a good trip. So if you're thinking about taking up adventure touring and you're like me, I've been primarily a street rider with very little dirt experience. These bikes uh, have the goods for you to be able to grow into them, but at the same time, they are forgiving enough to allow you to build on your skills without, without overwhelming you. Well guys, if you like the video, uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, head on over to motorcycle.com where we're gonna have the full ride up, pictures, specs, dyno chart, all the stuff that you wanna know about these bikes. And uh, again, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>